it's a life that everyone can live, even young people that are inspired to be what? To be farmers. Oh, this is yeah. really interesting. People were running away from rural yes. to, to the city. We life. are bringing them back. I've studied in Europe, and then Euro in Europe, agrotourism is something that is very big. There are people who just want that tranquil, yeah, exactly. yeah, a different environment. They are welcome. Yeah. You know, when it comes to farming, a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of young people are yeah. running away from farming. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's going to come a time that we say farming is the best thing that anyone can venture into? You know, when you are working in the cattle, yes. you need cattle which are very calm. You are, you are doing agrotourism. Yeah. People are coming to this place just to yeah. see this yeah. specific yeah. breed. Yeah, you see now. That's another goat and another couple is actually going to be shown how to do, to do it, to take a goat. So is it the fact that breeding is more lucrative than uh, meat production or you just decided to focus on breeding one? They are taking this to another level. This is Panganai Farm and today they have an activity and I was, I was invited so I'm really happy. Look at these guys. They are using hay as two. Uh, some time later they're going to take it and feed it to the animals. And people are going to enjoy themselves. But look at, look at the decorations. Look at the decorations and how they are collaborating with nature. You see the shed. So they, they told me that they have an activity where they, they named every tree around their farm and people are just going to be sent into the jungle <laughs> with a walkie-talkie, something like that. If we were to look at Panganai farm, you know, Vimbai and her husband, these guys, they know farming like the back of their hand. What if I could take maybe 20 people, you know, my subscribers, and, you know, come and spend some quality time here, learning farming, I mean, just collaborating with nature, just bonding with nature. I'm sure th that's what we want now. Look at these guys. These guys, they are not cutting down trees. That is something that we have to learn as Africans. We have to respect nature. Don't cut down trees, just collaborate with it. And that's what they're, they're doing here. Uh, welcome to Panganai Farm. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's in Wedza. <laughs> yes, we're in Wedza. We do boran cattle and we do agrotourism as exactly. well. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to talk about. Yes, you guys, yes. you're doing agrotourism. Tourism, yeah. He had already started building it and um, he, it was built in 2021. Oh, 2021. He, yeah, and then we, we opened late 2022 and then we've been just trying this and that, this and that uh, for the last year. So do you yeah. guys want farmers only, like people who want to start no. farming? Oh, no, 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 no. Everyone is welcome. Oh, everyone. <laughs> everyone is welcome. There are people who just want that tranquil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a different environment. They are welcome. People who want to come and learn about farming, they are welcome. People who just want a private, yes, luxury yes. Exactly. place, Kumusha, are welcome. <laughs> yes, you yes. Guys, you are collaborating with nature. Yes. I see that there are no trees that were cut down. Yes. I mean, there's good shade. Yeah. Right now it's hot, but could see <laughs> this is a good environment yes yes you have been in in europe for how yes. many years it was a total of about six six years yeah when it comes to agriculture yeah is it out, out of passion or is something that you started Ish, it's out of passion so i went on to do agriculture all the way to a level and then i went to do agronomy to Algeria for about six years and then I moved uh, to Europe just different places uh, to do my masters oh yeah so like today we've got a Valentine special so I see you, you can see there are a yes. lot of couples all around exactly yeah so we are going to have people are going to do tagging so guys what you are witnessing here is that a couple actually they catch their goat and they're taught how to tag a goat it's my first time seeing all of this when you're taking a goat, you don't take at the end of the ear, you take at the middle. They have their reasons. Alcohol. Alcohol. Nah, I don't drink. I just don't. The cow is, is set. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
What are other reasons why you chose this breed? Yeah, I've mentioned about the temperament here. Yeah. Yes. They're very calm, easy to handle. Yes. Um, you know, when you are working with the cattle, yes. you need cattle which are very calm. You are, you are doing agro-tourism. Yeah. People are coming to this place just to yeah. see this yeah. specific yeah. breed. Yeah, you see now, when you are doing agro-tourism, yes. people they are playing with the breed. Because it's yeah. friendly. Yeah, look at the, the cows. They're very calm. And they're very healthy. Yes. So, again, we have got what you call long of it. Oh. Long of it. You see that cow? Yes, the white one. With the white one, yes. Yes. Yeah. She was born 2010. 2010? She's still breeding beautiful cows. She's called Pokela. Pokelo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This breed can breed up to 20 years breeding healthy cows. You, you chose this breed, uh, Boran. Mm. Are you doing it for breeding or meat production? No. Uh, we, we do for breeding. For breeding? Yeah. We are stud breeders. Oh, okay. Right, so we 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 breed a seed oh, yes. to other breeders. To other breeders. So we produce a seed. We produce heifers. Yes. We produce bulls for other breeders. So is it the fact that breeding is more lucrative than uh, meat production, or you just decided to focus on breeding one? Yeah, you know, to be honest, yes. it's about when you are breeding, when you are into breeding. Yes. It's a high value when you are entering into the business. You invest a lot of money, but you have got good returns yes. when you do the business well. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes. You don't want, you don't have to do shortcuts about the business, right? So if you work very hard for the business, you can see the cows. Look at the cows. They are very yeah. friendly. So another thing, you know, you have heard about yes. uh, diseases. You know, we get eighty percent of diseases from cattle. They come from ticks. I'm now breeding my own bows. I've got plenty of young bows that I've produced here that I'm already using. But you just, just you have to do mm. genetic mm. diversification. It's yeah. really important. Yeah you, yeah, you always want to bring new blood into your head, you see. You know, importing from South Africa, does it really mean that in, in Zimbabwe we don't have that specific breed or you just need a No, breed the breed will be there, but you might not have that line. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. You I might understand. not have that line, so you want to bring that line into your head. Okay. You get what I mean? Yeah. What are the challenges that you're facing as a cattle breeder? As a cattle breeder, of course. Land. land. We don't have much land. Uh, the bulk of the land that we use here, yeah. we rent. We have got six places that we rent. It yeah. was my total hectare, is yes, 200 hectares. Oh, okay. But out there, I, I rent out. 1,000 hectares. Yo, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Just to accommodate your cows? Just to accommodate my cows. How many yeah. do you have? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, number of cows is just like a, a book balance. Oh. Yeah, but uh, I keep an average of 550. 550, 550 yeah. kettles? Yeah. We breed, we breed about two, slightly above 200 cows. Yeah. Yeah, every year. Are you not scared of loss? You, when you keep that huge number, it means that the loss sometimes it might be huge also. Yeah, you have to work very hard. We have to train our guys who are on the ground, our stockmen. Uh, we train them to make sure to make sure that they look af after our cattle properly. Every day, like those ones in the camps, yes, they we give them calls and they give us feedbacks, whatever. Seems when, like you're always busy. Yeah, when you're around, you are always busy. Yeah, but my guys, they are they are capable. I see. They, yeah, they are capable to to handle to handle the pressure for me. Do you think that agrotourism can be something that is big? Because as for me, I thought cows are just cows, but I am here. Mm. I am, I am, I am, I'm, I'm feeling something amazing when I am with other people, seeing kids, seeing cows. It's amazing. Do you think that agrotourism can be something that is big in the future? Of course, I, I think so. You know, we, we really want to inspire young, yes. young, young, young guys. Uh, you know, when they're in town, they think out there there's nothing. Yes. Yeah. So we want, when we tell them uh, that I can sell that cow for three, four thousand, yeah. 
uh, you know, you, you are really inspiring them. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So one cow, mm. how much can you sell it for? Right. Um, oh, pedigree cows, an average of 3,000. 3,000? Those with cows, 3.5, 4,000. Right. Mm. I mean, this one is big. Yeah, it's big. So it's, it's one of our recently imported bulls, yeah. Yeah. And another thing that I really like about the breed, yes. fertility. Fertility. Yeah. You know, f the keeping cattle yeah. is business. Yes. So you really want to have uh, cows that produces a calf every year. So most of our cows, we get a calf on foot every year. That's what... And they, they concept early. Oh. Early, they mature very early. At, at 50 months, they'll be taking a bow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that is why one of the reasons why you chose this specific breed Boran is because of fertility. It's fertility and other factors. And other factors that I've mentioned uh, uh, before, uh, longevity, temperament. Yes. They've got what you call head instinct. You, can you see when we came here, yes. they were all in one group. Yes, yes. They're always in a cluster. Why? It's just natural. That, that, that's their nature. You can see they, 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 they don't scatter. But that's a good thing. Yeah, so they are always, always um, in a group. So yeah. do, do you think, as for me, I think that young people are running away from farming because we think that it is hard. Do you think, you maybe you, you, you have met a lot of people, mm -hmm. do you think that young people are venturing into farming or running away from farming? I can see there's change now with uh, with uh, uh, guys that I meet here at the farm. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we have got uh, young guys, 25 years to 40 years. Wow. They come here, they buy even a very expensive bulls, right? The young guys, they can see the future of farming. Um, I've got a lot of visit from people in that spot. Yes. Yeah. They that's, come here. Yeah, that's why I've introduced the holiday homes. Yes. Well, some some of the diasporans, they want to spend three to four days with you. Yes. So yes. we have taken advantage of that, and uh, we are to 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 build our holiday homes. So they when they come here, we spend more time with them. So you're saying that if I want to buy a bull or a cow from you, mm -hmm. I could come here and spend maybe two to three days with you. Yes. Yeah. And learn yeah. about the cow that I'm, I'm about to buy, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, everything about cattle. You can even teach them. Yes, yes. That's, That's really you, interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, the guys, they will come here and spend more time. They want to spend more time with me. You know, it's a business uh, that, that takes time for you to learn. Oh, even yeah. myself, I, I'm still learning. Oh. Yeah. So it's not like a one-day thing for a person to learn about cattle. 